So, let's start with, uh, the first thing says, open the, uh, the production booth, and uh, we'll, we'll, it'll be locked, but we'll make sure that you have access to a key if you're doing it on your own. And then the first thing is lights, of course, lights. So, um, if it's, uh, it'll be, uh, it's not readily apparent what happens here, but in order to make the booth lights come on, you have to turn on the middle switch out here in the lobby. Oh, okay. That's so why that's we the had trick. It that's why we had them off. <laughs> you have to turn on these, this middle, at least this middle switch, but we usually just turn on the whole lobby uh, lighting in order to even get light into the booth. And that's the that's the one trick I wanted to show you with the lights off here. So um, the lights uh, for the, for the booth, then we can turn on here. But if we don't have this light switch on, it, oh, it doesn't turn on. <laughs> um, the uh, church, the front church lights are on these two switches, and those kind of go on and off depending on uh, what the pastor uh, would like for the service. Okay, so the next step inside the booth is to remove the window panels. Now, normally, these all of these three panels will be up, but we take them down one at a time, and the instructions are uh, in this. The one thing I want to uh, uh, point out is that you have to be very careful not to drop the panel on any of these. So <laughs> if you need help, <laughs> uh, certainly do that. Uh, they all work the same way though. Basically, bring them to the center, lift up, and then tip out. So like you that. have to take them out from the inside? From the you inside. take them out that way? Um, I think you, well, you, you at least have, here's the thing. They're, 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 uh, the, the first one has um, locks on it. So okay. you, you at least have to get the first one uh, out from the inside. You're not gonna. You're gonna take them out from the inside. Yeah, I, I don't think <laughs> they could be taken out very conveniently from the outside. Okay. And we put them here carefully, not to scrape the new paint that uh, Pastor Dennis spent so much time on. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about equipment power up. Now I'm always. You'll see that we're talking about two people here. Uh, one person is the sound engineer, one person is the uh, AV operator, audio video operator. Um, I think for the most part we will always try to have two people in the booth. It, 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 it's in, close to impossible to do it all by yourself and do at least do it correctly. So starting with the sound and equipment power up, sound engineer responsibility, the soundboard. The soundboard you'll see has a blinking green light. And I, I'm starting from the point of view as everything is off. So right now, right. This is, let's say you're coming in in the morning, everything's off. Or in the, wherever you're coming in. It has a blinking uh, green light. Uh, we hold that down briefly, but uh, enough to uh, engage it. So I say less than two seconds. One, two. It stops blinking, the light stays on solid, and now it's So that's um, always blinking? It'll yeah. always be blinking when it's off. Oh, yes. It's off. Okay. <clears throat> and it takes about 10 seconds then, or maybe 10 or 12 seconds after that, uh, to boot up the, uh, the digital system. I'll let it come up here. And then I want, I'll, I'll show you one more thing. Um, you see in the instructions it says, if a different screen is displayed besides the menu screen, and just a moment here. Another way to know is that all of the uh, all of the faders will come up. Okay, so if you want to take a quick look, this is the menu screen. That's what it'll look like. Okay. okay. And let me turn this off again. If a different screen comes up, that means you've held the button down too long. Okay. So if I hold this button down for too long it comes up and a whole different screen pops up. It says press menu to continue. That's the wrong screen and you start should over. start over. I didn't yeah. know why. <laughs> okay, let's try again. Less than two seconds. Two. There we go. You got it. So it is a quick press. Yes. Yes. 
And again, it'll it'll it, it will each time it boots up, it's loading its software, so it takes. It's just like a, it is a computer, literally. So it, it takes. It has a boot up sequence. I heard one thing already. So. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you got it. Okay. It's up, it's up and running. Okay. Any questions? Anyone else want to just try that? Or I think you, you see how it'll go. All right. And we, that was that's, all automatic? What's that now? That was all automatic. Yes. Once you get the power on, you had to wait like 10 seconds, and then all this came on and went out? Correct. That's, yes. That's yeah, it's a digital port. So these are the normal. Um, yeah. I, so those are normal settings. Well, I'll out. tell you about that in a bit. But yeah, <laughs> go ahead. We, there's there's no menu that we're changing to, right? The the menu that comes up when we start it is the one we're using. There's no longer a, we used to have to dial to right, a, right. No, yeah, no nothing, longer. no other, nothing else to the startup. Right, that's it. Okay. Um, then uh, we want to the, we need to start turning on the remainder of the equipment. Uh, in step two, the sound engineer, you'll see one uh, caveat that I'd like to just uh, make sure we do. Uh, it's more of a safety function than anything else, and that is to avoid possible random signal, audio signal on power-up of the audio equipment, make sure the LR master on the soundboard is off. <clears throat> so I'm going to point out the L and R master right here. We also call it means. L and R means. We call that means. So after this board comes up, the first thing and the thing I always want to do is press that button and turn it off. Which one was that again? That's this button, uh, the on button, and it's. It, I said the, the. You'll see it. The soundboard, gr the green light on indicator above this fader okay. is the on button. Mm -hmm. And is it always on when you turn it on? Not necessarily. Oh, you won't. Okay. That, that's why I do it for safety's sake. We okay. don't know if it's off, okay. so we want to just make sure that if it's on, you turn, turn it, it off. Okay. Yes. Okay. Then, the next step is rather easy. Underneath the board. And I wish it were somewhere else, but <laughs> it currently is underneath our desk here. Is the audiovisual rack or equipment rack? Uh, it has amplifiers. It has a processing board in there um, and a power distribution board right, or rack right here. You can see it says mm -hmm. power distribution. Okay, and to the right here is the main switch for the power distribution. And all you have to do now that you've now that you turned that off is turn on the power distribution. Everything's on. Now, uh, it, and I, I comment in here, if any individual piece of equipment in this rack doesn't have a little light on it, um, you, you will want to look for the switch for that individual piece of equipment. It could be on the left or right, and turn that individual piece on. That means that accidentally someone has turned that individual piece of equipment off. Normally, they all come on with the power distribution rack. Okay. Usually the only reason that happens is because it's under the desk and somebody, and somebody hits kicked it. it yeah. <laughs> exactly. You've kicked it with your foot, exactly. Okay. Any questions? So the next the next and last step for the sound engineer is I won't make y'all walk with me, but I'm gonna walk up to the front and what we're gonna see is the remote stage distribution hub. And this is a distribution hub for all of our microphones and everything on the stage so they're not plugged into the board. Now, I'll, so I'll head up here. <coughs> and this hub may be on the right side, or left side may be on the right side because it can be moved around. It's the black box. Yeah, man, this black box right here. And all we need to do is plug that into the board. And that's it for the uh, sound reinforcement equipment. Let's do the audio visual equipment. Okay. Um, and I'll let somebody do this hands on. Would you, would you like to? Go? I'll volunteer again, but tell me oh. first is that little blue light supposed to be flashing like that? It is. Okay. So well, that's let's not put it this way deal. it may or may not be. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter okay. at this point, no. That's right. what he turned on up front. Right? Oh, nope, okay. No, it's a, oh. actually a. It's actually a, a, an FX channel, uh, which oh. we'll talk about. Okay. The light was supposed to come on. We'll talk about later. Okay. Um, uh, on the, on the audio visual operator. Okay. Uh, the first step. Um, <clears throat> using the remote controls in the audio visual booth, mm -hmm. turn on power 
to both the projector and the monitor at the rear of the sanctuary. This is the projector, everybody. Oh, yep. They're always stored in that area. And they're always here in this. Uh, in the projector on it, right? Yeah, it says projector, yeah. <laughs> for convenience. And the TV in the back of the sanctuary is this sharp control. Okay. And it's labeled underneath. So you yeah. just click uh, on yeah. on both of those. So we'll uh, click on on both of those. And I'll, do, I'll let uh, Josh do that, since you're already out there. We'll turn on the projector and the TV. <clears throat> and these steps may, may seem random, but they actually have to be done in order. Do those remotes have to be operated out there? Yes, they don't work. That doesn't matter. Right yeah, doesn't matter, but okay. um, so both of them, you have to be right there? Yeah. So I've got them. I've got the numbers wrong. Five and six, not four and five. Typo there. The following steps now must be completed within about five minutes after powering on the projector. Otherwise, it'll auto shut down and you got to start over. Okay. So usually when we see the projector on, see how it's on now? Everybody see now in the front? You can see in the front, safe. the light's oh, on. Yeah. Now okay. it's safe to turn the computer on. So now oh, we turn it, okay. Oh, now you turn the computer yeah. on. So let's talk about turning the computer on in step five. If it's not already plugged in, and it usually is not, we want to plug in these the power. power. Uh, the this is USB and HDMI to the computer. So you want to go ahead and do that? The power is uh, it's to the yep, power is to the far uh, left there. The USB is next is in there, yeah. And then the HDMI that's the video is next to that. Perfect. That's it. And then open up the computer and press the power button on the upper right, the far far right. Excellent. Um, I, you would, um, you would uh, go out to the other two TVs. There's a TV in the lobby and a TV in the fellowship hall. And for, it's particularly for a Sunday morning, you turn those on. And by following all this order, those should pop, should pop up with the, um, with the uh, duplicating the computer on all of the TVs in the church. There's Just like that. There are remotes right there for both of them. And the mo remotes right there for both of them. And they're all labeled. Yeah, they all have a label on, yes. This this one will work for all three as well. Okay. If you, oh, yeah. If you take it around and just do all three at the same time, That's that works idea. too. Okay, okay. Now, how did that all power on that well, other that, TV? All of that came on in our sequence when oh. we brought on oh, the main okay. power. Okay. All of the other audiovisual stuff oh, okay. came on except for the computer. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that computer will be sitting there on Sunday morning? It, yes. Okay. Yes. You'd almost think that we planned this out. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> This is a working document. When we plug that in, it needs to be hung. Oh, yep, I'm sorry. So. And, and we've, we're, we're also doing this so that we can write down anything we forget. That is the what Pastor Dennis's is remote uses. Yeah, at the moment, we got to hang it up there. So we plug oh. it in. Where is that That's the, uh, the remote clicker for the uh, slideshow. Is that in here? No, I'm going to put it in. Yeah, okay. she, she, uh, Heidi's mentioning I got you. All right. She's so, mentioning I forgot that. So if something <clears throat> doesn't make sense, too, or you have a question, we'll hang, update hang you. Hang Remote clicker. Remote yeah. for clicker. Okay. Next for the, sound, uh, for the sound engineer is the remaining equipment setup. So the things I want to show you, the, the, all of our equipment is in the uh, back room. We're not going to go there. But all of our equipment is in the uh, cabinet in the back room. And we've got it in totes now. So you can just get a tote, get the totes that it contain the microphones and whatever. Uh, the microphones in this case and the pastor's uh, microphone. And uh, bring them up front. I probably wouldn't, uh, these we, we bring back, the pastor we bring back here, but the microphones uh, that go um, on stage, uh, we, uh, we would just bring, take those to the stage and we would um, plug those microphones in as necessary for the singers. Um, I forgot one step. Make sure, remember we did this already, but always make sure that this L and R main is off. Whenever we're doing any of this work, all this work, once this is turned on, this must not go on until you're all 
completely set up and ready to go. Okay. All right. Um, does everyone know, and that's a good question, does everyone know how to plug in a microphone? No. <laughs> okay. The, the end of the, of, there will be a cable there. Or, and I will later on, we'll show you where and how to hook up the cables. But let's say we've hooked, we plug this cable into the black box up there. And the other end, we carefully run and neatly run to the microphone stand. And the microphone just clicks like that. Okay, and what black box? That, the black box I mentioned earlier. The, the one the in the stage band. distribution okay. box. Okay. Okay. So that, that so give, the, the, yeah, give that a try. It's not hard to do. Yep, there you go. That's it. There's just a little, uh, if you haven't tried it before, there's just a little release there. You just, uh, that's how it's that's how it's done for any microphone, any microphone that you uh, that you would work with. So they all work with this, with any of the wire. That yeah, you any, have and there. any microphone works with any. So wire. we're plugging that in up, up there. Sure. If the, if there were three singers, for example, uh, I would probably have it set up for you. But if I weren't if I weren't leading worship, uh, if the, someone else was here, um, you might have to uh, plug in the microphones for the singers. That's easy to find on the black box. Where I'll have it, probably as we go later, as we go further into this, I'll have to. I'll be describing how we set, right. configure that. That's I would call a more advanced function. <laughs> For now, um, we'll have we have fixed um, fixed numbers on the on the black box, and I'll show you where okay. those are. Okay. Good. So um, that's the, uh, the, the the next step there. Um, in the future, I'll have to we'll have to train people how to uh, plug in connections for instruments, guitars, uh, keyboards, and all that sort of stuff. But right now, we don't have to do that. Then uh, finally, I want to show you this piece of equipment. Oops, where's my piece of equipment? Oh, here it is. <laughs> the iPad. The iPad. This is one of the coolest things about this board. Um, that'll be here and plugged in, just pow just powering up and recharging. But this, if you haven't worked with an iPad before, uh, this is the this is the this port or the the portrait view of the li iPad, and the, there's a button down here. But there's a power button on the back right here. So you just hold that for a second, and the little apple okay. comes up, and now the the unit is powered up. And then they looks into where on there? But, uh, you don't have to plug it in at all. No, I said where does it? Oh, when it's plugged in, it'll there's a little it'll plug right there. Yeah, when it's plugged in. Um, Is that always in this room? It's always in this room right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, where did you say these were? Because you had to bring these out. They're back in the what used to be the choir room. It's now just I the music no room. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'll show you. I can show you. But it, it, when is that iPad uh, charged up? When is it? When it when does when does it get its charge? When does it we get leave charged it on up? the charger whenever we're not using? Oh, okay. It. Yeah. So um, to make the iPad work, it says it is very it's user friendly. This is just an iPad, so you press that button. It says slide to unlock. It comes up with the password. If you ever forget the password, it's right here, 1375, which is also the address of the church, of course. Thir 1975, and now there's the iPad. If you've ever worked with a, uh, just like a cell phone or anything, you know, it's, a, it's got apps. The thing that's interesting about this, I'm going to turn it on its side, is this is the, uh, you can always answer no to anything that pops up. The, this is the thing that we use to do mixing with the board. You select that program, select the device. There we go. And wow, there it is. Yeah, you're, you're going to find this pretty amazing. This is a direct uh, remote to the to the mixing board. You'll watch if I move a. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, very cool. Isn't that amazing? It's a wireless remote directly to the mixing so board. Who would you use this? The sound engineer. Whoever's running Could the you sound. Have it? Well, why do you need both of them? Yeah, That's an excellent question. Why do we need this when we've got this wonderful thing back here? Because so you cannot hear. You can't it. hear. 
That's the bottom mix line. The sound. You cannot mix a, a professional sound environment from inside this room. You have to be out in the uh, sanctuary, oh, uh, sitting in the sure sanctuary. Out there with that, you must be out in the sanctuary. <laughs> this is here for convenience. Now, maybe in a big in a big venue, this would also be in the sanctuary. But in in lieu of having a big venue with all the sound stuff in the sanctuary, this is a great uh, tool. I usually, if you watch me, I usually have this up at the piano with me. You may not see that, but I usually, I usually have this with me up at the piano. This is the main source. This the is, main board. This is the main board. This cover. This hit. This can control everything on this board. I won't show you everything, but this is can control everything. Okay. This can't control everything on the app. Yeah. So when I, um, if I move this on the main board, look at that. Okay, it's moving. It's moving on my remote. It's really amazing. So um, this is how we'll mix. This is how we will mix sound uh, going forward. We'll be in the sanctuary doing the sound mix. So how do we become uh, expert sound mixers? That is going to really have to be a, a tutorial too. <laughs> it really is going to have to be tutorial too. Okay, but let's uh, let's cover the um, audio visual now. One thing that will happen as well is if the mouse is generally off, if, if you're the first person here, we save the battery. The so that we switch the mouse. So the battery's not in? Or yeah, the battery's in there, but we turn it on and off. All right. So go ahead, and uh, the step one is to click the icon to start the Media Shout program. And that icon is... Is that is, the green one? Uh, nope, it's the... Uh, uh, From the bottom. It's this one right here. What? Oh, the, the third? Right here. Yep. The third from uh, the so left. use the mouse, yeah. use the mouse, and oh. click that uh, button. Maybe. Oh, okay, good, thank you. Just click it once. Oh. It's done. It's coming what up. What is this through? And this starts our audiovisual program, which is called Media Shout. Um, the next step is open the opening the prepared script. So I, let me demonstrate, and then I'm going to have you do it. I'm going to demonstrate first, and I'll have you do it. To open the prepared script, we go to we can go to open right here, and. I, maybe I do need her. Because I don't know where it is. It, it's in downloads. Oh, thank you. And there's a Sunday scripts folder. No. Is it dated? The it's, Sunday they're scripts. They're all dated. Yes. All so dated. I want to open up um, 42918. I'll click on that and say open. And that uh, opened that up. Now it already was open. Usually, when you come in, because of whoever is doing the uh, configuration of this script, uh, whoever co wh when you come in, this will probably be open already. Who, uh, who typically does that? Then? Kelly okay. does the puts the pastor's sermon slides in, and then I do everything else on Thursday night. Okay. All the songs and so backgrounds. That's usually on. Okay. Be so before I go any further, you've heard me say that this is a script. And that's the terminology we use. The, 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 the whole show, the whole service, whatever show we're doing, is called a script, just like a theatrical script. Mm -hmm. So that is why we call it a script. That's what Media Shout calls it. This is the script uh, that you're opening up, the whole show all together. Each one of these little slides, they're not called slides, they're called cues in Media Shout. Very theatrical terminology. Um, and why am I telling you this? Just because I don't want to change the way this software does it. Because if you ever uh, they have to look into the software further, that's exactly how they will call it. They will call the the whole show is a script, and each cue or each of the, what we might call a slide is a cue. Okay, you went to open, then you went to downloads. Oh, downloads. Oh, downloads. Is that where you no, always go? It's, document, it's Sunday scripts. Is what you're looking for. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can just go directly to here. I did it wrong. That's oh, what I wanted. Hey. Okay. Uh, you so can you just go, go to oh. Sunday scripts. So okay. So you do open. Again, then. very often this will already be up. 
the right one, the correct one will already be up. And I'll show you here how you can look at that. Okay, then you go to Sunday scripts, and then you just look for the date of the correct. Sunday you're working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, in this case, it's 429. Correct. And that's it. <clears throat> exactly right. Thank you. Good question. Now, um, the next thing you need to do, and this is, we're still in startup, by the way. <laughs> we're not even in the service here. This is just startup. The next thing you need to do is what we call firing the queue. <laughs> Again, not my terminology. This is, this will be, and I'm only using the jargon here because this is exactly what they'll tell you to do. You know, so I, I want to use the same jargon that uh, Media Shout might use. So what you need to do to fire the queue is <coughs> move your, uh, go to the mouse and click on the queue, the, the first queue. Welcome to Bethany Church. I usually do the second. Welcome to Bethany Church. Oh, the second one. The there. first one is timed and moving. If you scroll down to the second, Welcome to Bethany Church, it's stationary. Keep going. Keep going. There it is. Oh, okay. So click on that, and the fire button is this little arrow right here. So click on that arrow and watch the screen, everybody. There we go. Okay. Why did we do that? Why did? Why was that part of our startup? Because you have to. You have to have a a, a cue showing in order to lower the screen <laughs> to make it look nice <laughs> this all sounds this all sounds very convoluted but we've got this down to a science other ways so. <laughs> you got to put the screen up and, up and the reason we use the second welcome the first welcome starts a timed right. the timed announcement yeah, the second so. one's stationary so your eyes aren't like trying so to um go ahead and uh, put the screen down now uh, heidi uh, why don't you describe that exact operation of that okay the, to put the screen down, you see that there are arrows, so the up goes up, the down goes down, and the middle one stops it. So okay. now you just lower it, and when it gets close to the bottom, we try to have as little dead space underneath as possible. So when it looks to your eye like it's about at the bottom, then we push the middle button. So uh, a little more. Nope, keep going. Yep. Out now. There you go. And, the, and again, that's why we fire a stationary cue. Otherwise, you get that it's extra at around, the bottom, yeah. and when we play videos and stuff, it looks weird. Okay. Okay. And if for some reason this happened to me this morning, you go too far, no big deal. You just go up and <laughs> try it again. <laughs> no, you can use that black border as the... As the border, yes, as, as the, the you guide. Can as you the guide. stop it going up, I assume? Yes, oh, absolutely. yes, you can. Absolutely. And we do put it up at the end of services. The pastor prefers that it's up during the week, so we okay. keep it up. Okay. Next step, um, and I'll try to f finish this up quickly here. Next step is um, check the script. And that, what, the, what is the script, everybody, again? It's the whole service. It's the whole, whole service, service right there. So you can check the script by pulling down that, um, uh, pull, uh, going, coming down on the right hand side, that uh, slider, and you can see that all of the different songs, all the different things are in the script. Okay. Mm. And you, you'll have to just get used to this. But let's start now. Audiovisual software right. startup. This is Spotify, Spotify, honey. Number six says Spotify. Oh, man, I'm sorry. Skip one. Check to see that the Spotify program has started. Um, Where is Spotify? I'll show you in just a second. Now, you, you were asked about that green uh, button, the green button icon down at the bottom. Use the mouse and go and click that button, that uh, uh, button, and there we go. Th that's the Spotify program, and it has uh, it has started. So that's all we have to. We just have to uh, check this. Oh, will Spotify? you do that again? The yeah. Spotify I didn't, I didn't is get the that. program that runs our music. So program. we'll go back to a media shout. Okay, and if you're here, all you have to do is click here, and that's Spotify. And we'll uh, we'll give you some more details on how to do this, but uh, the um, uh, You're clicking on what? I'm clicking on the Spotify program. Okay. And one of the reasons will be to uh, work with the sound. The, the sound engineer is going to turn. You're going to start up, start some music playing, and the sound engineer is going to come over here and check to see that the music is working. Well, I will, I'll get to. Yeah, oh, I'll okay, get to okay. these. Right. Yeah, uh, this will be a little. Uh, we'll, we'll split out and do this. There we go. And the next step is for the sound engineer is to enable the remote mouse. Okay. So, um, Jeff, if you take the um, 
mouse out of the uh, bin there. Some people call it a clicker. A clicker. Technically, it's remote a mouse. Oh. It might still be it at the front not, view. Oh, we didn't get we it. We didn't pick it up yet. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> we're, 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 uh, so that work that uh, that is working. Now step six, seven, excuse me, is enable the remote mouse. Here's the remote mouse. Jeff's got it in his hand. And it's always found here. It's and the batteries in. are always out. We'll put the batteries in correctly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a Not upside down. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we can check it from here, but it's a good idea to walk to the sanctuary. You don't have to do it right now, but it's a good idea to walk into the sanctuary and check it. Okay. So that's the mouse for the screen. And yeah, and you go yep. left and right. Not I'm sorry. If yeah. Media shout isn't Thank selected. You. It's not going to work. We got to go oh. back to media shout. Yeah. yeah. That, my, that was my my fault. I didn't get you there. Okay. There we so go. So Spotify can't be up. It's got to be in media shout. Right. Mm -hmm. You got to have an active yes. program. So Spotify. We might make a note on that. We're only going to Spotify to check the music. Check the music and have go back. Yes. Are you doing notes? Okay. And then so this should, should be working like. Shout is up to test the mouse. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, now we've we've got ourselves turned on and ready for service. Um, I'm I'm going to give you a few uh, a, a bit of an overview on the board, uh, but I, I let's start with one thing. Um, the when you have a band and now we don't have a band grant, granted it's just me I understand, <laughs> but well, you're about as good as yeah. Band, yeah. <laughs> when you have multiple instruments and multiple singers, the job of the sound man. And I think a lot of places kind of uh, don't um, don't uh, uh, recognize and emphasize the sound uh, uh, the sound operator or the sound engineer as much as they should because I I consider the sound engineer a part of the uh, a part of the uh, music portion of the worship service, uh, not just running the board but. Um, I look at it, uh, and I've done sound re reinforcement for years and years, um, even designed sound systems and uh, done work in recording studios. Um, the, the sound person is the production manager of the whole show. The, the sound engineer manages the production of the whole show. So it's, it's a lot, it will be a lot more. I'm going to show you some of the ons and offs and things like that right now, but ultimately it is a lot more than turning on switches and turning off switches. It really is a active, an active function. I used to tell my uh, sound engineer that I uh, had at, uh, um, back at uh, Old United Methodist when I was there for many years. I said, if I don't see you, if I don't see you moving, uh, moving faders and uh, changing settings, then I know you're not working. <laughs> you're not doing your job. Uh, when when I'm play when I'm up there playing, I expect you to be moving faders and and changing settings. And that is the the job of the recording engineer, the sound engineer, the uh, the sound tech. That's that really is their job, not just the on and off part of it. But what I'm going to so th I I give you that caveat because what I'm going to teach right now is just the on and off part, okay? <laughs> and not the not the uh, intricacies of sound mixing. We'll, we'll take another class. We'll do one more class on on that kind of stuff and actually that's you know kind of lifelong learning really is learning how to uh, understand mixing but let me start with this I'm going to switch places with you um, just go back here so I'd like to introduce you to the board and let uh, and help you to understand what's going on with this board um, if you uh, maybe you've never worked with a soundboard before maybe you've never um, uh, worked with a mixing console like this, but um, and I'm not going to go into the history of everything, but this is what we call an, a digital console. It's not an analog console. It's a, it is a digital mixing board console, and it, 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 we I've got it set up so that it looks and feels as much like a just a simple mixing board as I possibly can. But there are still some tricks to the fact that it is a digital board. Um, so let's start out with the general overview of the board. What we have here at the bottom is your what we call the fader, uh, the fader section. And a fader is a slider that increases or decreases a value. In the case of this fader section, with some exceptions because it's a digital board, but for the most part, the faders in this fader section increase and decrease the, the sound level of a certain instrument channel or voice. 
Okay, so that's the fader section. Up above here is the control section for the faders. And you can see that in this configuration, I only have a certain number of uh, in, uh, inputs turned on. If the, if the input is off, that means it's not connected to the sound at all. And off in this mode, that means it's not connected to the sound for this mode. When it's on, it is connected to the sound. Um, on a digital board, we use uh, a selection to configure each, to allow us to configure each channel differently. So by selecting that channel, it's not selecting it for sound, it's not selecting it for um, fading or, or volume, it is selecting it for configuration. And I'm not going to go into that totally right now, but the purpose of selecting is to select it for configuration. What does that mean, configuration? Well, let's say EQ, filters, um, uh, uh, compression, some of the sound things that you do to a channel to enhance and, and, and filter and, and make the sound better for that okay. particular okay. instrument or voice. So are the, those green, five green, are those the microphones then? So actually, uh, in, our, in our scenario, and you can see it right here, actually, uh, on this paper, and I'll, I'll, I'll try to document this better. I just got a handwritten right now. Right. But number eight, the number eight channel is David. That's my voice. Okay. Number nine is my background harmonies. Number 10 is Joyce. Number 11 is Bob. Number 12 is Roger. Number one, uh, a six, I can just tell you, I don't have them written down here, but six is my all of my keyboards, and seven is all of the drums and bass. Okay. And I have them all on different, all of this is on different channels, of course, so that you can configure the sound differently uh, for those uh, instruments uh, and voices. Okay. So you'll see if you look up here, the, uh, the, the instrument channel has a certain configuration, the drums channel has a certain set of configuration. My voice has a different configuration. The background harmonies have a different configuration, and so on. So you've all those got are basically those all like uh, bass and treble and well, sound EQ. Effects. Part of that is yes. Part of that is the EQ is a, uh, a, a, a a a changing of the equalization from bass to treble mm -hmm. and all the frequencies in between. Yes, um, and then the compressor. Like I said, I don't want to go into this in detail. It's, uh, the compressor is uh, the is a, uh, a device that um, engages to limit uh, to dynamically limit the sound pressure level of that individual channel as it gets louder and softer. So it's no, very I'm not sure what all that means. No, nah, you don't. That's what I'm saying. You don't have to know all that. But you have a the comp you have the configuration preset for. I have it set up right now for our setup, yes. Yeah, right. And this is some, this is way advanced. I don't even want to go into this, but that, but to answer those questions, these are things that modify the sound of the uh, the levels, just like you now say. How much of these are like uh, standard positions? Like in other words, you ne you rarely fit anything. You have to uh, adjust them over the already preset. And you just leave them alone. At this how point, yes. Them? At this point, none of this ha uh, for what we're talking about. None of this has to be touched. None of this has to be uh, adjusted oh, so at this point. Yeah. You just ignore that. Yeah. I just want to show part. you that um, the Use next button you're going to see down here mm -hmm. yeah, is this. And then finally down here you have um, what's called a solo button. Uh, I'm going to teach you how to use the headphones and use the solo button to hear what's going on. Okay. So let's just out of, uh, just as an experiment, um, right now, there are a couple things that are not, uh, for, our, for our show, there are a couple things on this uh, fader, uh, uh, in this fader section, there are a couple things that are not being uh, uh, used in our sound mix right now. Uh, and I have this list here, can anyone see what's not currently being uh, used in, uh, in my mix? Uh, your instruments? No, they're on, that's six and seven. Six, seven, eight. So it looks like twelve and twenty. These are on. Yep, twelve and twenty. Joyce and Roger are not being used, and the twenty-two, which is the music, is yeah. not on. Yeah. And what else is not on? The pastor. Yeah. Number one. Okay. Number one. So that's way over here. So let's say the pastor stands up, and um, again, I want to just teach the on and offs here. The pastor stands up, he starts talking, and you don't hear anything. 
Why? Do we? Can we see why we don't hear anything? Yeah, because they're not turned on. He's not on. Yeah. Okay. So that's the whole aspect, the, the whole thing above of the on and off per. Now, what is this solo and uh, selecting? Uh, what is that? I have a, a really mm -hmm. basic board. Okay. On my own. There's no need to use them, but the select again is is unique to a digital board because the select um, uh, tells us uh, the select means that we're configuring this channel and that enables the configuration up here right, for that just using channel. him as the example what would these uh what would these have to do with him and you know the microphone or whatever well if i turn if i turn this on that turns on uh, and his I wanted, microphone and i wanted to change his bass and treble i would hit select and i would change the bass and treble here on these uh, on okay, these so controls, that's that's and that's only changing his. Right. That's only changing right. his. And what is solo? Solo is a a, a mixing a, a, a mixing board terminology for uh, exclusively listening to that channel through the headphones. So all of these are channels, then. So each one of these faders. Right. Um, I I can listen. If I plug my headphones in, I can show, I'll show you how to do that. If I plug my headphones in and press the solo button, I can hear just that person or a group of people. Right. A group of people. However many of these lit up, those are the ones you'd be yes, able to Yes, those are the ones I'm listening to through my headphones. Yes. Okay. This is, and I'll get to these in a, in a bit, this is a controller uh, called a uh, encoder. And what it does is, it, what, it has different functions, but the main function for this controller is to set the gain. And I'll, again, I'll, I'll show you that in a minute, but this is the gain setting for... Uh, what for did you call it, gain? Gain. Gain. G-A-I-N, gain. gain. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you that in just a minute, but let me show the, let me continue on through some of these uh, other buttons. As we go up the board, we get to what we call uh, the mix group buttons or what the, what the board calls fader follow buttons and what this means is there this is our main fader mix uh, and as, as I said before of course if I want that sound to go out to the audience I have to turn on the mains mains on or off. Are these, are these normally preset? Normally yes yes okay we also have what we call auxiliary um, mixes, and these are mixes for monitors and for um, other rooms. So for example, if I want to uh, look at the mix that is going directly to the camera, and for the Fellowship Hall, we don't have any of the praise music going into it, only the pastor and the, uh, uh, and the uh, um, music, background music, yeah, the, oh, the, right. yeah. So that's why you'd have different mixes. You 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 have, and this board can uh, accommodate up to uh, fourteen different mixes, and we're only we're only using a small amount. But that's the reason you'd have different mixes is to, uh, in different areas or for different people, have a different sound for them so they can hear better or do you know do something do something better. Um, the camera does need a slightly different mix because. Um, be, and it's not that much different, but it does need a slightly different mix because it um, it's not the camera doesn't hear all of the ambient sound either. So the the effect of the ambient sound um, kind of changes what the camera hears. So we tune it to make it sound good on the camera as well. But the most important thing are the monitor mixes, um, primarily for me. Or I mean for the sound uh, for the the, the, the singers and for the uh, Fellowship Hall. Uh, uh, so there's me, Singers, and Fellowship Hall. And they all have different mixes. So when, when you're done with the songs, then we go to the Fellowship Hall, and Pastor and Fellowship Hall. Is that right? No, no. Uh, so um, these are just to set up the mixes in these different areas. They're always on. So, um, okay, so uh, it's just the, a different... When you're done, with the, the music, mm -hmm. we don't make any changes then? No, so let, okay, so that's a good question. Let me get into that now. Right, that's okay. that's where I'm headed with that. So, the, uh, and then, okay, as we're going up the board, I was going up the board, let me just finish up by saying, sure. this stuff is, um, again, this configuration stuff, 
there's no need to work with this stuff right, right now. It's all configuration. All over here is con is configuration. Uh, so there's no need to work with that at this moment. Similarly, as I go down to the final side of the board, this is the main output, as we said, and these are different fader levels. There's no need to work with those at this point either. Okay. So now, now that I've kind of given the overview here, let me go exactly to your question: Is what is the uh, what's the execution on a on an operational basis, day to day, uh, day to day? The first thing to note is you so you've seen me clicking around different things. Um, looks very confusing, which I agree it is. Um, but the bottom line is the the one thing that the, the only thing that is important to the mix in the sanctuary is this first fader environment with none of the none of the mix buttons on okay so let me demonstrate how to navigate between these i may be uh, looking at the mix number three uh, notice that what you see is a, a, a yellow caution light that tells you that your faders are on a, su a sub mix, mix number three. See how these are all yellow? Okay. It's it's a warning. It's saying you're not on the, the main mix. You're not on the mix for your for the sanctuary. You're on some sub mix, and you can look up here and see where you're at. Same thing over here. If I happen to just accidentally get way over here, these are effects mixes. Again, nothing you have to touch, but I'm just showing you that you can get into these situations where you're not on the mix that is associated with the church these these are not I mean they're associated with the church but these are not part of the show that's going out to the service they're not part of the service so that's the, the main thing I'd, I'd be I'd want you to have as a takeaway here is I, I explained that this is the the fader bank and the faders for all of the church and this is ex this tells you in this mode this tells you everything that's going on all of your on-offs, everything that's going on for the sanctuary. If you get into an accidentally get into another mode, you have to be very careful and watch that you're getting a warning light that says you are not in the church mode. No, anymore. we were warning like that. Blue is a warning light. Yes, it's a, it's well, it, not a warning. It tells you you're somewhere else. <laughs> it's telling you you're somewhere else. Okay, so um, to to get back to in any case to get back to your in your your default church show your in your church environment you look at the you you realize that you're not where you need to be and you always look up here to this row always come to this row okay. where what's wrong with this picture right at you the want moment main one there, don't you? no i i want nothing i want nothing so what's wrong with this picture this monitor is on Turn, that one off. I turn it off, oh. and now I'm back to where I want. And then you yeah. automatically put now, that to the preset. Yeah, now I'm turning things on and off like I should. Okay. Um, let's try uh, another one. In fact, okay, don't look. Everybody close your eyes for a minute. Close your eyes. This is a thing. I ha I do I do airplane flying. You know what they do? They sometimes put. They tell you to, the the instructor tells you to cover your eyes. He takes the plane. He puts it in some weird dive or something, and then he says, "Open your eyes and fix this." <laughs> right? Oh wow! <laughs> that's start a plan. Yeah, start. Does your heart, heartbeat faster? It does a little bit, but that's really that's how they do train. Uh, so, um, okay, everybody, close your eyes. I'm going to put us in a. I can keep my balance. Okay, there you go. What's wrong with this picture, and how do I get back to where I want to be? You got your blue oh, lights on. And that is wrong. And, uh, is this no? Yes. Always, always just look across this this line. So you want that far? I don't know what I was looking for. Yep, I don't know what it. I'm looking for. Yeah, oh, that was on there. That was on, exactly. Right, okay. Let's do it again. Okay. Yeah, do it again. Okay. Is this where you want to be when you're no. mixing the no. church? No. What's wrong? Uh, monitor three. Yeah, monitor yep. three should press be. Press that. Press that. Just press that button, and it takes you back to right. your mix. Okay. Okay. So, um, 
I, I will ultimately show you all how to use these all of these other buttons but this is uh, this is the one of the most fundamental things about these crazy digital boards that, that yeah, I have to uh, I have to teach you is to not is to get back to the default environment okay so um, I'm going to do I'm going to uh, take a moment here I'm going to go up and start something and I'm just going to show you a couple things, okay? Are you coming back here? I'll, be, I'll come right back. I'm just going to start something on my... I'm saying there's no sound coming through anywhere except my little amplifier up there. So, first of all... Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm oh, sorry. I'm going to start from scratch here, or not from scratch, but I'm going to start with the systems off. Um, what is the first thing we want to do to get sound into the sanctuary? Turn on our... Turn on our mains. Okay. Now we have to send from our from our uh, instruments. We have to send signals to the mains. Let's start with the instruments. So somebody go ahead, be brave, and uh, make that instrument go out into the mains. You get six up there. At the top. Up here, man. Up there you go. Perfect. You got it. All right. Then let's. I can Let's add, <laughs> let's add the drums. Nope, you missed. Wrong button. Perfect. That's it. Does that tell us what those are drums and... No, you know what? Unfortunately, no. This, this digital board, uh, one of the places it lacks... I'm going to turn it off. One of the places it lacks a little is it. a lot of digital boards will have a little display where you can name things. Okay. This one, unfortunately, does not. Um, it has a, if I went to the menu, it, it has a way to actually have it show a name. But we'll see later that I can name it on that. So, so what we have done here is we've turned on, uh, we've turned on these two instruments. If we wanted to turn on the remainder of the music, for uh, we, it's mostly voice on. So that would be my voice. That would be my backgrounds, and these would be the backup singers right here. So now, aside from, if we just assume these, all these settings are right, we assume all these settings are right, we've just produced our show and got our show running. Okay. Uh, we, should, we shouldn't have to adjust any of that, right? Well, you do, ultimately. Oh, we do? Ultimately, okay. but I, I'm just trying to get through the on and offs right now. Okay. <laughs> Let's say my, you made a mistake and you had the pastor on also. Would that yep. do anything differently? To yep. the... That's a great question. What would, I, what would that do if I accidentally had the pastor on? We're going to hear everything he's saying. You'd hear him singing. You'd hear him we don't singing. want to hear him singing. You don't want to hear him singing. <laughs> you don't want to hear him singing, exactly. That, you, could, you would hear him singing if you left that on accidentally. Uh, oh, even worse, um, I've had sound people uh, with a, if I've got a wireless on, I've had sound people leave it on while I'm walking, say, into the bathroom or something. You know? <laughs> so I, I really have had to have, it's not good. You ever seen so. the movie The Naked Gun? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Leslie Nielsen was in the bathroom. Exactly, with a wireless <laughs> microphone, yeah. So, um, <laughs> and, um, just, just for sake, just for sake, I'm going to change the volume. It, it, it goes without saying, I guess this is the master mains, master volume, and these are the individual instruments, okay? So, um, you usually have that main set the way you want it going on. Well, I will, but I, I, my, my goal is that everybody here becomes really, really good at setting these settings. So uh, you don't just control control both from... of these will all the way down. Would that completely shut off everything here? Yeah. But you wouldn't hear anything. Yeah. No volume. Yeah. So what you're hearing out there is just his monitors when everything's off. Yeah, that, that's just that little amp on stage. Oh. Yeah. But you're not controlling that yourself from up there? The board? Aren't, yeah, aren't you controlling it? Uh, the, the, little, the little amp or the board itself? I mean, the whole, I mean, your whole the music, board. aren't you controlling it from up there? Not the mix, not the mix up front, I mean, that's yeah, the job yeah. of the sound man. Oh. Yeah, I what don't. Are you, what are you controlling up there then? Well, I've got three sets of 88 keys, that's enough. <laughs> Oh, okay. So you're not you're not messing with the sauna. I so some, only some, sometimes he's had that up yeah, there. To I, play have, with. I keep this up there only for the purpose of 
doing small adjustments. I don't have time to oh, really okay. do a lot. Okay. But I'll do small adjustments and. Uh, but ideally, no, I see that with a lot feet. of groups that somebody's. Oh, oh, you know what they're that. doing? That's a good comment. I'm gonna turn this off. That's a good comment. When you see groups that have something like this on stage, you know what they're actually doing? They're adjusting their mix in their ears. Oh. They're not adjusting the front. They're adjusting the mix oh. in their ears. Oh, okay. And I do that. Uh, I can. We can do that for me up front too. I can. Uh, I can select my mix. And I can. This, if I want more of my piano in my mix, I can just turn it up. It doesn't affect the front. It just affects what goes into my ears. So your minor adjustments will be the entail. Uh, to the me, front? What would you be controlling up there? Me? As a minor, as I, a minor adjustment. I, under normal circumstances, I'm not changing uh, regularly. What I do mostly is, during the sound check in the morning, Heidi, who is an exceptionally good uh, sound person also, uh, she goes around uh, all around the room. In fact, that we can talk about that for a second. She goes all around the room and tells me, what needs to be up, what needs to be down a little bit, and wow. we make the adjustments. So every Sunday morning, she checks the entire room for sound. We do a, a decibel check. We make sure our decibels are less than uh, uh, about 82, 83 decibels. So we check the volume. Uh, you ran a little bit hot here this morning because you drove me and a lady out into when the, well, the last song. You usually came out hot. It does, but um, <laughs> but we checked all those songs. None of them were over. Um, none of them were over 78, 79 decibels. No, so, so, the problem was that her and I we both had really problems. Ah, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. And it came off really, really heavy. Yes. So um, uh, we do that before. The, the answer is the answer is we do that before. I oh. I rarely make much adjustment on stage for the out front sound. If I'm adjusting anything, it's usually my mix. So she's walking around with this and making the adjustments then? She doesn't, no, she's just telling me what to do. That's why oh. I have it up front. Mm -hmm. yeah. But oh, okay. in, in normal practice, you all would be um, walking around with this and listening to the mix and adjusting adjusting these mix settings. So, Bob, really, I once we once I learn more, I don't really want to be sitting in here. Not you at can't, all, really? You can't hear anything in this box. Oh, so it, this it, per I see somebody sitting here. I, I, right I'm now, sitting, yeah. I sit here all but the time. But you'd rather be out there with this. I, that's, but I want to learn more. That's why I want to go to these classes, so I can know how to set yeah. some of this other stuff and be out there. Oh, okay. Because in here, you can't hear. You, can't you don't hear what's out there. Yeah, it's it's, a, really it's not a... Well, it's... Yeah. So and, there, there's speakers here that you could... Mm -hmm. have going uh -huh. but then it's not reflective of what's yeah. going on out there oh. so ideally the sound person you know i've been sitting in here for the last year and a half mm. but ideally the sound right person there. would be out yeah. there so everything yeah. he needs to control is on this yes iPad. everything is everything is on this ipad uh -huh. every, even though that's not as much there as there is here right there's just more pages <laughs> oh okay there is there's but, just more pages to get uh -huh. to but yeah. you only need one one particular page on this to do it. You said there's more pages, but you just need this page, right? Um, no, no. I mean, oh, there, yeah, oh I, I see. You can scroll. I gotta the rest send. Yeah, you have to send you around to all the pages here to get this. Uh, even, uh, for example, the uh, the the EQ, um, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, um, compression, and so on. Everything is. Uh, Everything can be adjusted. Yeah. And the other thing is, I usually go around in the morning, first thing on a Sunday, with myself with this, and set my, uh, set my default levels, and check all the EQs. And then while, while we have the whole group playing, Heidi goes around and says, uh, you need a little more drums, you need a little less drums, you need a little more Roger, a little less oh, Roger, or whatever. So. Yeah, so oh. it, it's hard to hear in, in here. Yeah, if uh, well, I'm just gonna pick on Roger. Say Roger is yeah. just way off. I can I can dial him up and down, yes. just Roger. Mm -hmm. um, but really, the ideal thing would be I would sit out there and hear better than yeah. I can hear it all mixed together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, really, I think that takes us to where I wanted to be today: is the on and offs of it, the on mm -hmm. and offs. Um, the things, to, the keys to remember: are this uh, this is your board right here, and these are your on and offs for 
the individual things that are happening. Yeah, the thing, uh, mics or instruments or whatever, yes. If you're in a service, basically your job, irrelevant, irrespective of mixing the sound, your job on the board is to make sure that the pastor is on when he's speaking, off when he's not speaking. Ultimately, I'd love to see it where you, um, where if uh, a singer, like if uh, Roger wasn't singing, uh, and I, only I was singing, you'd take off the uh, the background singers. Remember when, so. before they came and, and set up the soundboard correctly, we used to get feedback at a lot of times? <laughs> yeah. It's because there were microphones not in the right place, and they yeah. were in front of speakers and things like that. Yeah. So really, the only way that I had to deal with that would be cut microphones. On, on and off. Which yeah. one? Which one is making the feedback? Right. So when when the pastor's speaking, when you're done with the, uh, mm -hmm. the music, the music, do any of those go off? Do well, we uh, I, that? that's a good that's a good question. And uh, fundamentally, uh, if if the pastor's done and it, or if the music is done, like if, if it's the sermon, fundamentally it would be a good idea to, to turn, turn them all off. off. But. but. You gotta There's get, times you play in the background while he, you gotta, he's talking. I was just going to say, you got to watch out to make sure that the instruments that are being played are live. you got to keep yeah. them live. Because he'll, he'll be playing when yeah. he's doing a prayer. Yeah. Or. Most of the time, just... It's not this, too hard. This isn't yeah. the way it, it, it should should be ultimately, but I usually just leave it leave on unless there's yeah. a problem. Oh. Even the background... Uh, yeah, even... Yeah, it, no, but I think once you get the hang it's of it... I think once you get the hang of it, it's um, it, it'll be easy. You can start start trying to do some on and offs of all of these. But that's the whole goal here. As far as the mix goes, for now, basically leave the mix where it is. I may we may uh, in in a sound check we may say, could you bring up the drums? What would you do? Bring up the drums a little bit, <laughs> you know, or take the drums down. You um, have drums. Yeah, not, so, too drastic, not too much. Yeah, not too much. Little movements. Yes. But ultimately, when I have you on, when you're volunteering for that Sunday, we need you here a little bit before eight thirty. We start practice at eight thirty. Yeah.